My wife ended up asking me for an open marriage also, true story. Let me share my story with you. Hello, true story. I hope my email isn't too long to read. I didn't expect to write so much. You are greatly appreciated for the platform you provide. I can only imagine how many men you've helped through your YouTube channel. Us men don't always have a safe space to vent our frustrations. I want to thank you. Below, I attached my story. Hopefully, someone can learn from it. All right, let's see. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you, when you send in your stories, go ahead and just copy it, copy it in the body of the email. Because if it's an attachment, then I have to go through, you know, scanning it and all that stuff. And honestly, I'm not too comfortable opening attachments. So a lot of you probably have emailed me attachments and I never read the email. And I've emailed you back and said, hey, put it in the body. Some of you sent, sent it back. Some of you didn't. But um, this one's good. So let's go ahead and get into this. I met my soon-to-be ex-wife the night my sister had my nephew in the hospital. Me and my parents, along with her child's father and, and parents, were all there. My soon-to-be ex-wife was taking a break. She's a nurse, by the way. True story, I've read enough of your comments to know that nurses are a no-no. Yeah, I've heard that too. <laughs> I've learned that here too. <laughs> but unfortunately, at the time, I didn't know this about nurses. So Emily, my soon-to-be ex-wife, was taking a break getting coffee from the canteen. I was there as well, and she clearly started flirting with me. I thought she was gorgeous, so I reciprocated. We were chatting for a while. I kept my phone out in case I was alerted by family. I then was asking her if she had a boyfriend. She says, yes and no. I said, uh, what? She says, so it's complicated. I said, care to explain? She told me that her and this guy she'd been with for a few years recently just moved out because they were having a rough relationship as, as of lately. She said that he had become unsure about marriage anymore because he wasn't done playing the field. I was asking her, so why still entertain a relationship with him if you know he wants other women, but you want marriage? She says, exactly. That's why I said yes and no. I know I can't be with him, but we literally just separated, so it's still fresh. I said, ah, I see. I then said, well... I gotta head back up. You take care. As beautiful as she was, I wasn't interested in asking for her number anymore. But she looked at me with this sad look and then said to me, Can I have your number? I'd love to chat with you sometime, just as friends. I said, Sure, why not? And I gave her my number. She smiled and texted me right there, asking if I got the text before I walked away. I said, Yeah, and I headed back up to be with my family. My sister delivered my nephew that night. It was wonderful. My sister and now brother-in-law went on to marry and are still married today. He and I are pretty close. We hunt together during deer season. I'm not going to act as if their marriage is perfect. He nearly divorced my sister because she was getting a little too carried away with girls' night out trips. I remember him complaining to me that he felt he was losing my sister, and he didn't really know what she was doing for those days she was gone. Some of the girls that would be on the trip were single. My sister and just one, just one other woman were married. The other woman who was married got divorced from her husband. I believe it was because of the trips or what happened on them. Because he left her and doesn't even take care of his kids now. I believe he left the country. But that's another story. I truly believe he found out one or maybe all were not his. My brother-in-law told me once that he's losing my sister, his wife, and it's better if he just divorced her because the pain is too much. Apparently him threatening divorce, it was a wake-up call, and she stopped hanging out with those girls. Till this day, my brother-in-law makes little jokes saying how he has no idea if my sister ever cheated on him while bringing up those girls' trips. 
Of course, my sister shrugs it off and says, no, I've never cheated on you and claims she barely drank on either trip, on any of the trips. She said that once before. I knew that was a lie. My sister is a serious drinker. She didn't while she was pregnant, but for sure, as soon as she delivered my nephew, she said to the nurses, start the tubal ligation and hand me a bottle of scotch. Wow. Never doing that again. My sister literally has at least one drink per day. She functions just fine. She just needs alcohol for whatever reason. My sister doesn't know, but my brother-in-law got a secret paternity test done on my nephew. He told me after he got the results, he said he wanted to tell me, but couldn't risk me running to my sister. I definitely would have, but I understand. As a man, I feel it's our right to know. That definitely is grounds for divorce. In my opinion, if you end up not being the child's father. Anyway, my sister and brother-in-law got through it all. Obviously, my nephew is my brother-in-law's or else he would have divorced my sister and they seem happy together now today. Like I said, I talk to him often and he seems very happy. Anyway, the next day after my nephew was delivered, I got a text from Emily. This was on a Sunday and she texted me asking if I was available to talk. I said, sure thing. And she calls me. Not even five minutes into our conversation, she brings up who she now was referring to as her ex. She brings up how he is harassing her and begging her to come back to him and marry him. I stopped her right there and was asking, why are you telling me this? She apologized and said, I'm so sorry. I'm just frustrated. I told her to call one of her girlfriends and, and vent to them, and I hung up the phone. She then texted me, and it read, RUDE, in all caps. I went on to do some housework in my place. I'm not about to listen to you speak about your recent ex. You clearly still have feelings for him. Some weeks went by. I never deleted that text from her and didn't think to block her, but she texted me and was asking how I was doing. I clicked on the text, went and proceeded to block her. I had forgotten about her, but was reminded when she texted me. I immediately remember why I stopped talking to her and had been talking to another girl anyway, who ended up cheating on me, by the way, with someone she met on a dating app. I swear I'm horrible with women, which is why I decided I'll never marry again or be in a committed relationship. It's weird because they always pursue me, but eventually I do something wrong in the relationship to drive a woman away. I met Gina maybe a month after Emily called me rude and I stopped talking to her. Gina was cool. We met at a Little League baseball game. Her nephew played and I was there helping my buddy with coaching his team. I wasn't a coach at all, just assisting for that day. One of the other coaches was out ill. Anyway, Gina approached me after the game and it was obvious she liked me. We exchanged numbers on the way to the cars and hit it off quickly. It was nothing like Emily. Gina didn't have a recent boyfriend she just broke up with. She never talked about exes and honestly, we had a lot of fun together. Something very interesting as well is that Gina knew Emily and they were associates in high school. I thought that was interesting. She said they were never really friends, but she just knew her. I told Gina I knew Emily and briefly talked to her. Gina was okay with it. I mean, we didn't have anything and, and they weren't really friends anyway. About five months of Gina and I dating exclusively, she started posting pictures of us on her Facebook and tagging me. Emily hearted every last one of those pictures. Wow. I never brought it up to Gina and she never said anything either to me. A month later, Gina, she starts accusing me of being sneaky, claiming I had to have been talking to someone else because I was away for work, a trip. On one of those days, my phone died. I didn't get a charger until the next day because I really didn't have time to get one, nor did I really need my phone. I communicated with Gina via Facebook during my meetings when I should have been listening fully, but... I snuck in some DMs here and there to Gina. She claimed I totally was lying and I was cheating and I was not in a meeting. In all actuality, true story, I was not cheating. I'm not that type of guy, but clearly she didn't believe me because I caught her at dinner with the guy she met on a dating app. So after the constant accusing me of cheating and claiming I definitely cheated and even wanting me to take a polygraph test, wow, 
I thought it was ridiculous. I started snooping through her phone because I thought there's no way she keeps constantly accusing me and has no evidence. But she's for sure I did, so I thought she was projecting the entire time. So eventually I started snooping through her things and at first I didn't find anything. Until I did. I found that dating app. I went through it and she had talked with several guys. Granted, this all was after my work trip where my phone died. So honestly, I think in her head this was all just get back. Well, if he's cheating, I'm going to cheat, which is stupid if you ask me. But that's what happened, I believe. Well, I'm pretty sure. So I started to monitor everything. She had no idea. I knew her passcode to her phone. I saw her put it in one time. Just me being nosy, but at the time, I never went through it. And going through her phone, now, finally when I did, I really never had to go through it. Because I didn't find anything that she was doing before. Even though I knew the passcode, she wasn't doing anything. It's all because she thought I cheated on her. So I'm monitoring their conversation and it's getting deep. She told this guy... She has a boyfriend, but she's not sure anymore about us. Instead of me just breaking up with her, I pretended like I had no idea. I'd come over, we'd hang out every time, I'd sleep over, and when she went to sleep, I'd go through her phone to see what they were talking about. Eventually, they decided to have dinner together. This was around the time where she just wanted to stop getting it in in the bedroom. We had went like three weeks without it. So I knew she was gearing up to probably sleep with this guy or move on. Men, this is just how women are. So when you hear videos and stories or even read forums where men are saying, well, if she's not sleeping with you, then she's sleeping with someone else or she's gearing up to leave. That is absolutely true. I saw it firsthand. I saw when she started cheating on me when she thought I cheated on her. And once the bedroom action stopped, that's when it became physical with this guy, at least just for dinner. She was preparing herself to move on. Some women aren't as disgusting as most would say. You know, some women will sleep with their boyfriend and then go sleep with one side piece and then sleep with a random guy they met that same night. All women aren't like that. I will say most women will probably cut off the action so they'll feel comfortable getting it in with another person or cut off any type of intimacy or being romantic or anything with their main person before they move on. It just sits right with them, morally. And I know some people are thinking women and moral in the same sentence, that doesn't match. But stop being silly, guys. Truly, it does. And truly, that's how it is with most now. There are a ton of disgusting women, even though they don't represent all of them. There's a lot of them. Too many to even count. But most women, most of them, will for sure just stop the bedroom action with you. And that's really, really a big red flag and a sign that she's moving on or has moved on already. So I knew exactly when they were having dinner and where they were having dinner at. I had already read it the night before her and I had slept in the same bed. Of course, we didn't get it in. She wasn't in the mood by this time and I was done. But I kind of just wanted to catch her in the act. And I don't know, I even recorded it, guys. I never posted it anywhere, but I still have it on my old phone. I definitely recorded it, so that day, just for craps and giggles, I was asking her, hey, you want to go to dinner? And I even brought up the restaurant that they were going to meet at. This could have been a giveaway, but I didn't care. And she says, no, I'm not up for it. I think I'm just going to go to Kroger and get something to cook. I'm really not feeling well today. I said, are you sure? They really, really have great burgers. She says, no, I'm not up for it, but I really appreciate you. She gave me a kiss and told me I was sweet and thoughtful. I left that morning preparing to catch her, so I showed up about 30 minutes before they were supposed to meet at this restaurant, and I went and got me a seat. I'm looking around, and I'm just waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm making sure... I got a seat where I faced the main entrance because I wanted to see them walk in. Not too long after, just in time, they come walking in and I'm just looking. She has no idea I see them. I notice them walk in and they walk over towards where the fish tank is at this restaurant. And they sit there 
and I can see them clear as day. And she's just smiling and he's smiling and she's touching his shoulder and she even grabbed his arm once and put her head on it. I said, wow, this woman was just with me the night before. This whole time I have my phone recording me and I'm recording them at the same time. I'm talking in the video and everything. My whole thought process was, I'm going to start a channel or something, or put this online and blow up. I never did, and it's still on my old phone. They got their food and everything, and I sat there, and I ate some pad thai, and I had a drink. And eventually I got up, and I walked over, phone in hand. I grabbed a chair from another table, and I sit down. And I said, hey Gina, how's it going? On a little date here? I have my phone out pointing at her and the guy. And the guy looks ticked off. And, and I said, what are you going to do, big man? You want to fight? And he looks at me and says, dude, I'm not fighting you. I said, so you knew she had a boyfriend, huh? But you just didn't care, huh? He said, that's none of my business. If she wants to move on, then she's going to move on. And I looked at him in his eyes and I said, you're absolutely right. I looked at Gina and said, so what do you have to say for yourself? You accuse me of cheating and everything. And here you are with this guy cheating on me. Where'd you meet the, where'd you meet him? She said, he's a friend from work. I said, why do you constantly lie? You met him on a dating app. And that's what I told her. I knew everything. She says, well, if you knew everything, why did you stay with me? I said, that's a good question. I should have left you a long time ago. She then starts telling me how I cheated on her and everyone told her that it was obvious that I cheated on her and she's silly for staying with me. I told her I never cheated on her. What I told you was the truth and nothing but the truth. You decided in your head that I was lying. I don't know if you're insecure. I don't know what it is, but I didn't cheat on you. But this is your little get back and I hope it was worth it. We're done. You'll never see me again. She told me bye, she didn't care, and she'd leave some of my things outside of her door. Have a nice life. I got up, went back to my table, paid for my food, and I left. Of course, yeah, I went snooping on her Facebook to see what she was going to post. Who wouldn't, right? First thing I noticed, all of our pictures were gone. She got rid of them. That kind of hit me in the gut, man. And then here comes the post, memes about karma, how payback is a bee, how it's okay when someone does something to you, but if you do it to them, you're a horrible person. Be careful who you date because you never know what they're hiding behind your back. All types of trauma, all types of drama, and she never posted like this before. I'd say that day... Up until maybe three days after that day, she posted all day, every day, about everything about relationships. It was obvious that her and I had just broken up, or she just went through a breakup. People telling her it wasn't worth it if he treated you that way. Never date a liar. Everybody on her side. And I'm just watching. Like, wow, this is so ridiculous. So after a few weeks, the seven-month mark hit where me and Emily had stopped talking. Guess who DM'd me? Aha, uh -huh. you guessed it. It was Emily. She couldn't text me. She probably tried texting me, but she was blocked. She DM'd me asking how I was on Facebook. That was actually what she said. Me being lonely and bored, I responded like an idiot, and I started snooping on her profile, and I'm looking at her, and I'm thinking, wow, she is gorgeous. I was feeling a certain way. You know me and my ex had stopped having sex before we even officially broke up. I wasn't sleeping with anyone else. Then I went weeks more without even having bedtime action. And I saw Emily, and she looked amazing. In my head, I was just going to screw her, and that's it. I just needed to get one off. I responded, and we're talking back and forth, and I was asking her what she's up to for tonight. She told me nothing, just bored. I said, ah, same here. Wish I had something to do. And her words after that told me that I could come over and have her. Her exact words were, well, you can come over and do me. That's exactly what I did, folks. She sent me her address. I called her after unblocking her and told her I was getting ready and told her to be ready as soon as I got in. She assured me she would be, guys. I went over to her place 
It was immediate. As soon as I walk in the door, we start kissing. She locks the door. We go to her bedroom all night long. Of course I use protection. I'm not stupid, guys. All night long, man. I just needed it. I know some guys would say, you're weak. And I was weak. Some guys in your comments, True, would say, why would you go back to her? You got rid of her. Why would you want her? It was there and it was available. And I swear to you all, all I wanted to do was get my rocks off that night and I was done with her. I had no interest in a relationship that one night turned into another night, then another night, then the other night, then her coming to my place to us having lunch together, to us having dinner together, to all of a sudden, we're in a relationship. It all happened so fast, man. I promise you, I didn't want to be with this girl at the time. It just happened. Truly did develop feelings for her. She wasn't talking about her ex. It was just us building on each other. We never even spoke about why we stopped talking. It felt right. Eventually, we are going out. She started taking pictures of us together with selfies and us at the park having picnics and in front of waterfalls and walking trails, things like that. And of course, she posted these pictures on Facebook. Now, Emily and Gina never stopped following each other on Facebook, and Gina and I never stopped following each other on Facebook either. We remained friends there. As soon as Emily started posting pictures of her and I on Facebook, I got a DM from Gina telling me, I knew you were cheating on me with that B. You're a piece of crap. You were with her all this time, the entire time we were together. There's a nice place in HE Double Hockey Sticks just for you. Karma will, karma will get you, you piece of crap. Thanks for proving me right. I know now to always trust my gut. F you. I never responded to it. I deleted it, actually, and I never showed Emily. She was ticked. I know it may look like that, but she's completely wrong. I never cheated on that woman. I never deliberately told Emily to post us on Facebook and hope that she'd see it. It wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking about it. But this is how everything played out, and this is where I ended up. So Emily and I were going strong. Things were great. We barely argued. No accusing each other of cheating. No weird taking away bedroom action or anything like that. It was great. Emily and I dated exclusively for two years straight, and by then I felt like I wanted to marry her. Yes, of course, she's brought it up several times, and I told her, yes, I was interested, and I wanted to get married, and I wanted to have children. And all of that. And eventually I proposed to her after two years. It was beautiful. We both cried. It felt right, guys. It felt like it was something I needed to do. And I thought and I thought she was going to be my forever person. I didn't think eventually she'd change up on me and want to do something as dumb as an open marriage. I would have never even guessed it. But again, like I said earlier, I am horrible with women. I don't know what it is about myself. I just can never seem to get it right or do it right. In the beginning, maybe, and then I just go the opposite way and screw up everything. I don't know, man. Anyway, we get engaged and everyone's happy for us. I enjoy her family. Her family enjoys my family. She enjoys my family as well. We all just got along. It was all great. Her work schedule never really bothered me. We had two different work schedules at first, and eventually she switched to working the same schedule, but it never bothered me at all. We found out how to make it work. I think in those situations, if you really love each other and you two really get along, then you're going to figure it out. And that's what we did. We figured it out. So being engaged wasn't bad either. Nothing wrong like in the other stories you read. She didn't suggest an open marriage while we were engaged or anything like that, giving me any type of warning. No, we enjoyed our engagement, had our engagement parties and dinners, and paid for a lot of stuff, and eventually, we got married. The wedding was great, honeymoon great, everything was great. We decided, let's wait to have children, which I'm so glad we did, and didn't have children. We were very careful. She was on birth control. We were safe about it. We did not want to have children yet. We wanted kind of we we kind of wanted to establish our marriage and really honestly enjoy our marriage with being child free. Yeah, we did before enjoy each other without children before we were married, but let's be married without children for a minute. And it was great. 
We took trips. We continued to date. That was one thing we wanted to make sure we did. We didn't want to stop dating just because we were now married. We made it a point to continue dating and having fun and keeping each other happy, and it worked. It truly did, which is why I was so confused when she brought this question up to me. She wasn't drunk. We weren't arguing. She just out of the blue was asking me how I felt about an open marriage and would I, and would I ever consider it. I told her absolutely not. I would never want to do that. Are you wanting an open marriage? She says, no. Well, I just wanted to see what you thought about it. And I called bullcrap on what she was saying. No, you want an open marriage. Are you seeing someone else? Are you doing anything with anyone else? Tell me the truth. She sighs and then says, okay. Yeah, well, I'm not seeing anyone else. I thought about it and I think it may be beneficial for us. I said, what in the world would make you think it would be beneficial for us? She proceeds to tell me how other nurses and even doctors have an open marriage at her job, and some of them even sleep together. I said, you can't be serious. So you think it'll be good for you because your colleagues do it? She says, no, but I mean, it is a bit interesting listening to it. They all have very strong marriages. In fact, one doctor has been married for over 10 years, and he and his wife has always had an open marriage. I said, well, this is something you truly want, huh? She says, I just want to try it, and at least we can say we tried it. We don't have any children yet. Let's just give it a shot and see how it works. True story, I thought I was in a freaking dream. I couldn't believe she was asking me this, but I didn't have to pinch myself to realize that it really was happening. But this time, we had been married for a little over two years. True story, you want to know what I told her? I told her I appreciated her for being honest with me. I truly did. But I can't do the open marriage thing, and I'm going to go see a divorce lawyer. We're getting a divorce. I didn't try to open the marriage. It didn't even cross my mind. I don't know how guys do it, even if I could go and slay a bunch of women. This is not what I signed up for, and that's what I told her. I didn't sign up for this type of relationship. I don't want to share you, and I don't want to be tossed around from woman to woman. But we're getting a divorce. True story, the waterworks started. She started crying, kneeling to the floor, begging me to not divorce her. I knew I shouldn't have said anything. I thought I could be honest with you. I feel so stupid. True story, I want you to know that whole letter thing is real. She sent me more than three, handwritten, all of them. Sorry I don't have any images to send you so you can read them. I threw them all away. I didn't give her any time of the day. I immediately left the house. Luckily, we didn't own yet, and I'm currently going through a divorce as we speak. Actually, it's been going on for five months now, and my lawyer is saying we're about done here. We're both walking away with what we came with. I don't owe her anything. She doesn't owe me anything. She stayed at the house. She took over the rent payments. And I believe there's like three months left on it and she's moving to an apartment. But it's about over for me, guys. All the men listening, especially the young men, I want you guys to listen to my story. And if you have to listen again, listen again. Look at the mistakes I made. Look at the red flags I ignored. Look at what I put up with, even though I did the right thing by blocking Emily the first time and not giving her the chance of the day to tell me about her ex-boyfriend. I still made a lot of mistakes. Why would I even get with her if she just recently broke up with someone? Why would I eventually take her back just because I was feeling horny? You see how that one night turned into a marriage? That one night could have turned into a lifelong connection with her. What if she got pregnant somehow? She wasn't on birth control. Yes, I use protection, but things break sometimes. Accidents happen. Even with Gina, when she started pulling away from me or even accusing me, I knew I didn't do anything. The first time, maybe even the second time, she calls me a liar. I should have walked away when the trust was gone. There's no relationship at all at that point. Me staying just so I can get a stupid video footage of her cheating on me and maybe becoming this megastar on the internet? was stupid. That was dumb. The moment I found out she was cheating on me, emotionally, I should have left. I should have confronted her, and I should have just left. 
I should have jumped on Facebook and put the narrative out there that she cheated on me and I never cheated on her. But I allowed that narrative to play out that I was a bad guy. If I shared some of the posts with you guys, you probably would be upset with me. You probably are already reading this story. It was making me look like this huge monster, but I completely ignored everything. I made the mistakes, and I understand the True Story channel is about learning from the mistakes of others. True Story, thank you for allowing me to share my story on your platform. True Story Nation, be well. Wow. I love it, man. I I love it, dude. Um, I'm going to tell you why I love it. I love these stories in particular because even though it makes you, it can make you look silly from some of the mistakes you made. You have to put it out there because this is how young people, I'm going to say young people, this is how people learn from other people's mistakes. They're hearing, okay, they're seeing what you did. You know, we, we may hear like, oh, if she takes away the bedroom action, she's getting it in from somebody else. Here's somebody firsthand who was dealing with, with someone who took away the bedroom action and she was moving on to another man and he watched it play out in real time. He's, t he's proving to you that that's real. You know, he's showing you all the mistakes he made. Don't get with a girl if she recently just broke up with somebody or she's dealing with, with somebody. She still has a connection with somebody. He did. And he showed you what happened, even though he cut her off in the beginning, guys. He said, nah, nah, I don't want nothing to do with you. Block. Eventually, he was feeling away. She came crawling back. The reason she came crawling back is because he left her, by the way. You guys know that? He left her, and she, she had to prove a point to herself. No, I can get this man. She got him, and then when she then look at what she did. Can we have an open marriage? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. It's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. Be careful. If you're going to be in a relationship, vet. Vet, vet, vet. Make sure if you're going to do it, man. Guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. I'm going to catch you guys at the next one.